Samuel Daniel, he did a really incredible talk, inspiring everybody to get into some of the cool emerging tech stuff. Um, he knows his stuff. And so we've just snuck him aside to kind of get his perspective on what you developers should all be doing. So to start with, I'll get you to introduce yourself. Let everybody know, Daniel, who you are and what you're really passionate about. Daniel Newman, incredible talker at CBIT. Yep, that's, that's him. Also, Daniel Newman, principal analyst, future and research, five-time best-selling author, CEO of Broadsway Media Group, and old tech dork and musician. Excellent. He, he comes from a very good background, I think. And so, ew. <laughs> yeah, I met my parents. Yeah. They're uh, good people. Love you, my dad. <laughs> Do they watch YouTube? Uh, sometimes. Yeah? Yeah, cool. So they'll see this. They'll be fine. They'll just Google your name and you'll awesome. come on. <laughs> There's lots of me on Google. Yeah? yeah cool. Yeah. There's also a Daniel Newman actor who was mm -hmm. in the Vampire Diaries. Yeah. So great story for the audience. You mm -hmm. mind if I tell you? can always cut you it know, out. Totally right? tell yeah, them. Okay. It's so, important. No, this is funny. So Daniel Newman was a actor. Uh, like I said, he was in... He's m most known for Vampire Diaries, but he's also in Walking Dead, a few other mm -hmm. shows that people know. He's a bit actor, but he has the same name as me. And I'm verified on Twitter, and he's verified on Twitter. And we're the mm -hmm. only two Daniel Newmans on the planet that yep. are verified I see this on, generating confusion. Well, he came out. And um, I'm all for whatever people people choose, but I got mm -hmm. about 100 tweets that day from people <laughs> that were congratulating me <laughs> on my decision. And mm. you got to remember, this other Daniel Newman's like a really – fairly attractive he's a model he's mm. been a calvin klein model so i'm like wow how did you look at the picture <laughs> of me and confuse me with the actor daniel newman mm. that, that, that happened to come out that day so that was a great story about being daniel newman. that's that that is incredible yeah, so do so you get a lot of tweets at you that are completely irrelevant or not so much overall but that particular day i mean occasionally someone mm. misses and gets me but as a whole i think most people figure it out but that day was uh, was interesting. The first tw the first couple was like really like congratulations mm -hmm. on coming out. I'm like, oh, that's really interesting. I've been married <laughs> 16 years and have yeah have three kids and this is something, hey, I, something I didn't even know it's about. It's a me. new turn. In your life. Well, you that's know, cool. maybe sometimes you know predictive analytics, big mm -hmm. data. Maybe somebody yep. was seeing a pattern and that's decided true. To call me out on it. You know, technology <laughs> can be very very smart. Oh, it can. It really can. That's how we tied that all together. Yeah. To the next question. See, that's yeah. that's why he gets you know brought in by CBIT. That's. <laughs> for those exact reasons. That's cool. Now I've got an aim where I've got to eventually get the other Daniel onto the yeah, thing and get him to talk about side. machine learning and stuff. And yeah. If one of these developers stops you in the middle of the street or maybe kind of in a more closed environment where they see you at a meetup or, you know, just coincidentally happened upon you and they're really keen, they want to get into emerging tech, they want to do, say, virtual reality, augmented reality, artificial intelligence, machine learning, IoT, they don't know, they just... They want to get something, right? They want to just, they want to make an impact and they want to kind of be relevant in the coming years. As somebody who's looked into a lot of this and you kind of, you see where things are going, you see kind of where businesses are wanting to take this, what would you tell them? Where, where would you advise people who are watching to kind of look into what should they do? Well, I think it always starts with the answer I gave you the last question, purpose. Mm -hmm. Why do they believe they want to be into that? What is the problem they believe they can solve? How can they create customers, mm -hmm. business experiences for people through the use of that technology, yeah. right? So if you're developing websites and you want to implement augmented reality into an application, why? Yeah. Why do you think that's good? Why do you, why do you think people would use it? And I think mm -hmm. a lot of times technology, we, we throw technology for technology's sake. Let's say, you know, if you're in business, right? If you're a developer and you're in business, whether you're an entrepreneur, you work for a company, people don't buy technology to... Yeah to solve technology problems. People buy technology to solve business problems. Mm -hmm. So through the use of whatever technology you think you want to get behind and make a big push towards in your your work, I think it starts with purpose. Yeah. So don't just generally just go, I want to do VR stuff because it's cool. I mean, you can like for <laughs> hobby, right? I mean, But for career purpose and if you want to actually build something. Right, and I think if you want to go to your boss and get them to fund additional headcounts mm -hmm. or time or you know back you on a new project right yeah. i mean i'm all for the moonshot yeah you know if you've heard the term you know the 10x return right but i think even most moonshots happen because they they think they have a problem they can solve yes. so purpose or understanding what the problem mm -hmm. you think you can solve and then how technology can help you solve it when you can solve a business problem a people problem a human problem people will spend no end yeah which is yeah i completely agree so especially i think if there are tech people out there and they're wanting to join the startup kind of 
community they want to make their own business that's like spot on advice because they'd be like rather than making the next gaming company which chances are won't kind of be any different from the last gaming company that a startup has decided to make if they've got purpose if they've got like a reason why they want to get into the tech it'll kind of have a bit more of a chance of making an impact of some degree yeah i mean i like you said i think sometimes when we're that mi- minority of people who just know tech mm. we just like it it's like yes. i said it's being a geek yeah and I, I forget if being a geek or a nerd is the good one i, always forget I think one. both are good so okay but i know one is kind of seen as cool and mm-hmm. one of them seen as not as yep. much but either way my my point is just because you can doesn't mean you should yeah 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 that makes sense so then another thing that i really liked in your talk is that you talked about mixed reality and about getting everybody away from looking down at their phones and more seeing content just kind of overlaid in their world, looking up instead of down. And it's an area which I love because I'm really keen on the Meta 2 AR headset and they kind of talk about the same stuff all the time. And what I wanted to know from you is, do you see there being a ton of developers who could catch the trend early in mixed reality to start working on it now? Or is it something where they should hold off and kind of, is there any pathway you'd kind of recommend for how to get into that mixed reality stuff? Because it's not here yet, but if say all of computing is gonna be slowly changing away from the phone, is there any point in somebody going out and making a mobile app anymore or should they be thinking more broadly? Well, let's talk about mobile apps for a second, right? Mm-hmm. They say the average person uses five apps 90% of the time, mm-hmm. I think is the stat I saw. So I think anyone that's developing a mobile app should ask why are they making that app. Yes. I don't mean people should stop making apps, but I think we have a lot of people chasing unicorns, mm-hmm. right? So I believe in building dragons. That's, yeah. that's my book, but that's also what I believe in is building something with purpose to try to make money, not to try to raise venture capital. Now, yeah. occasionally, right, you have the perfect storm. Mm-hmm. You've built Snapchat, Facebook, Google. You need money and you need yes. time. But most of us, what we're building should be something that we can hopefully try to monetize, mm-hmm. bring customers in. Um, so I made the prediction in five years that people will be moving away from the, the, f- the phone. And I, the fact that I call it a phone is a problem, right? It's mm-hmm. a mobile device. but it Because most of us, the phone is one of the least things <laughs> we actually do on the device. I know. Right? I've Just had to stop people. calling people again, and it's weird. I should have taken this one off. <laughs> oh, that's all good. Um, I still like talking to some people mm. by phone. That's why I like good unified communication. I like to kind of pick and choose how do you want to yeah. talk to my... But what, so I believe that we're gonna get away from the, the phone and the device. I believe it will be moving into our eyeballs via, I think Google was early with glass mm-hmm. and I think it was ugly and you looked like a glass hole <laughs> if you wore it around. Mm-hmm. But I think that new versions will be more fashionable. I think you can use contact lenses. It's gonna be a wearable of some sort. Yeah. And I think that people will wanna have the peripheral data and information of their surrounding. You know, We're already seeing it with augmented reality in vehicles, you know, we're soon gonna have vehicles that we're not driving, you're gonna have a table, we're gonna mm-hmm. be in the cars, transporting, and outside in the window in the glass, you're gonna be pulling data from all your surroundings and information. Well, the same thing is gonna be available to us. We're all gonna become RoboCop. So cool. Right? Everybody wants to be RoboCop. I totally wanted to be RoboCop <laughs> when I was a kid. But mixed reality basically gives us a combination. You know, we have so much information, the kids go to school and everybody wonders why am I asked mm-hmm. to memorize stuff? Right now, it's still obtuse to have to look down at your phone, go to a page, search for something, find the information. But if through a conversation, through an artificial intelligence, the the device, your mixed reality device, can be pulling data Mm -hmm. to help answer the question, recall, right, using AI to find the best sources of information, uh, allowing you to see, of course, social activities that are going around, it's just super powerful. Yeah, it's it's it can really help you reimagine the way you work. That, yeah, I totally agree. And so, if somebody was going to develop for that, have you seen any examples yet of like what a good mixed reality experience would be? Has anybody kind of come out and shown anything yet where you thought that is kind of the right direction? Like, was Google Glass even close, or was it like completely on the wrong track? I think it was too early. Mm-hmm. Um, I think you know we're starting to see it in some of the apps, design apps. We're seeing augmented reality for like designing like I talked about in the, in the speech about like the clothes we wear right yeah. a combination of 3d modeling to be able to try things on mm. um, a mixed reality to be able to 
uh, experience um, like a hotel room or a potential home you might move into. I talk about virtual, but mm. mixed reality could very much put us in those environments by helping us immerse a little more and engage yeah. and experience inside of something. I talked about Pokemon Go. Having entertainment mm. could be a very powerful way to get people using mixed reality, where you give people a purpose for commerce. Yeah. Right? They, they want to go get their little Pokemon, so they go into your chocolatier store mm -hmm. and they check out your chocolates. Yeah. And the point is, is that it's mixing an experience that people know they want, which is to play the game, to be mm. part of the, the community, and something that they don't know they want yet, which is they don't know if they like this guy's chocolates. Yeah. But all of a sense. sudden they find out that, hey, because the game took me there. So I think, you know, again, the purpose there was to engage people mm -hmm. in something that they could compete while simultaneously finding ways to, to you know, build business with, with these small businesses yeah. that are looking to attract more people into their stores. And it, it worked smart. pretty well. I mean, it, some it of was clever. I mean, yeah. it, it sort of waned a little bit, but mm -hmm. you could definitely garner that people were interested. Yeah, which is brilliant. So. Cool. And then to finish up, how can people find out more about you? And tell them a bit about your book. So you can learn more about me. Twitter is a great place to start. I still love Twitter. Follow me at Daniel Newman UV. The UV at the end is very important, or you're going to follow that super awesome star mm. which maybe you can follow both follow. i guess but he's um, better you can check out my website it's futurum.xyz and my latest book building dragons i've written five so i'll tell you about that one the latest one and yeah. then you can even go down the list it's if you digital like transformation in the experience economy it really is a book if you're looking to build a company that understands how technology and experiences are going to create the future of very successful companies that are able to not only survive but thrive in the age of digital. Read the book. It's an easy, it's a fast read. It's not like a textbook. It's super useful. Great case studies and examples. And you can get it at Amazon.com just by searching my name or searching Building Dragons. Cool. Thank you so much, Daniel. That was incredible. Go check him out. He's a very smart dude. Check him out. He's pretty smart, too. Maybe not right now. Yeah. <laughs>